welcome to the online worship for St. Mary of the Angels. Uh, I'm thrilled to have you with us this morning. And just to let you know, our service this morning is going to be just a little bit different. Uh, there, there are so every every week we have readings, and it, we usually have one or maybe two. And in our actual service, in our in-person service, which you can come to if you want, we, we social distance, we wear masks, we keep it clean, uh, and those are at 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings. But uh, every week we have four different readings that we go through. During the online service, though, here right now, we usually only do one, maybe two. Well, today the readings that we have are so very important that I couldn't pick just one. So we're actually going to go through all four of the readings today. Now, what I will do is I will keep what I have to say shorter. Uh, you're welcome. And that way, uh, it won't be too much time. We are also going to spend a little bit more time uh, singing today. We'll have a couple extra hymns today as well, uh, which for you, either sing along or take them as a moment for quiet reflection and peace. Take them as a moment to, to pray, because that's really what, what hymns and singing to the Lord is. Uh, and then we are going to say a few prayers as well. So the very first thing I want to do is I want to open our service with our, our collect of the day. It's our prayer of the day that captures the theme of the day. And I'm going to start by pronouncing a blessing on you. I want the Lord to be evident in your life, so I'm going to say the Lord be with you. And I hope you want him evident in my life, so you say and also with you. And I'm going to say, let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We have a liturgical calendar that we follow in our church uh, with different seasons, with Christmas and with Easter and Lent and Ordinary Time and Epiphany. We have all these wonderful seasons. And the Christian calendar, uh, the last season is Pentecost, the season of Pentecost. So it begins with Pentecost Sunday, where we celebrate the Holy Spirit coming down on the disciples and really the birth of the church. And then we have a long period of time. We have 20 plus weeks that are listed as after Pentecost, uh, the first Sunday after Pentecost, the second Sunday, the third, the fourth, the fifth, so on and so forth, until we get to like the 22nd, 25th, 28th Sunday after Pentecost. Well, this week is the last Sunday after Pentecost, which means this week is the last week of the church calendar of the church year. Next week, uh, this is our, our New Year's, and next week we will begin a new church year with Advent. And I'll tell you more about that uh, next week. But for this week, today has a very special day. It's, it's, it has a very special name. Today is not, a, a, yes, it is the last Sunday after Pentecost, but it has a better name than that. Today is known as Christ the King Sunday. So we're going to talk about that today after this hymn. There is no place in all the world You do not call your own Creator of all peoples Every nation, every tongue From every corner of the earth Boundless is your reign Father, Son, and Holy Spirit Hear us sing your praise To you, asking for your help. Oh God, be merciful to those whose pain we've never felt. Give them rest from worldly sorrow. Bless them, Lord, with 
food to eat We ask you gentle shepherd Call the ones that are your sheep Seeing Lord, now look to those in city and in field who seek to spread your fame and love this broken world to heal. See your persecuted children. Be their strength that they might hope in you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, may your kingdom come in all the earth as it is in heaven. May your will be done in all the world and all our hearts. Jesus, you are King. we soon shall see in all the world in all our hearts Jesus you are King we wait we hope we trust we know your face we soon shall see we wait we hope we trust we know your face we soon shall see. Okay, we're going to jump right into our first reading of the day. And we start usually with an Old Testament reading. This one comes from the prophet Ezekiel. Uh, and we like to, we like to announce uh, what we're doing in our services. So somebody will get up and they will say a reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Uh, and then everybody will sit quietly for the reading. And then after that, they're going to say the word of the Lord, uh, because that's what the scripture really is. It's, it's the word telling us of uh, the story of God in our lives and in our history. And then the people respond, since it's the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. So I'm going to go through and do this reading, uh, which is from the book of Ezekiel, the, the letter of the prophet Ezekiel. Uh, and it's chapter 34, starts at verse 11. And it says this. This is good. You ready? For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on the day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on rich pasture and on mountains of the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and shoulder, 
and butted at the, all the weak animals with your horns until you scatter them far and wide. I will save my flock and shall no longer be ravaged. They shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken the word of the Lord. Really quickly, I want to share with you what I find to be absolutely amazing about those verses. Traditionally, when people are seeking God, or when people are lost and they're trying to find something, they have to go to find it. They have to do that work. And throughout history, people would go to a God, to pray to a God, to appease a God if they wanted or needed something. They would go and offer a sacrifice to a temple with an idol, with a God saying, I need this, so I'm going to go to the God of this, and I'm going to seek them out. If you wanted to get a God's attention, because God was so much greater, or sorry, not God, but a God, any of the ancient gods were considered to be so much greater, so much higher than we are. The only way that you could get them to do anything for us was to shout out and give them an offering of praise uh, so that you might get their attention. So they would take notice of you and provide for you whatever you wanted. You had to really earn it. But there's something different here. The God that we are talking about, the God from beginning to end and beyond, our God that we worship, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that God, yes, he wants us to come to him, but something else miraculous happens. If we don't, he comes to us, and he will seek us out. Even though he is so much greater, so much more powerful, even though he is all that is good, he will come and find us, his scattered sheep. And then he'll take us to good pastures. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
every Sunday morning comes from the book of Psalms. Now, I've told you this before, and I'll say it again. I love the book of Psalms, and I'm going to say it because it's important that you know this. The book of Psalms, to me, uh, uh, is really a illustration of the human condition, of our condition, our hearts and our minds and our souls in the attempt to understand and reach out to and communicate with and hear from God. So anything that is humanity, we find in Psalms. And that's wonderful because the Psalms aren't just all about happy, glory, wonderful time. They're about our struggle trying to find God. They're about our struggle trying to understand God. But they are, so, so there is sadness and, and darkness and hard realities of the human condition in Psalms, but, or Psalm, but, there's also joy and great peace. And that is something that happens in our lives. We have these valleys where we dip down low and we don't feel like we can hear God, but we also have these mountaintop experiences where we see his face clearly and we understand the glory that is he. Uh, so today our Psalm, uh, you can decide for yourself what type of Psalm this is. Uh, it's Psalm 95 and it's verses one through seven. And the way we do this in the church is because the Psalms are the condition of humanity, the condition of the people. It is the people talking to God and sharing our understanding of God. Uh, when we do these during the service, we don't just have somebody stand up front and read it. We have somebody read it and the congregation reads it all together. The people in the service read it. And it might look like the person up front reads the first half of the verse, and then the congregation reads the second half, or maybe the person reads one whole verse and the congregation the sec uh, second verse, or we just all read the whole thing together. But it's so important that the congregation reads the Psalms because this is us talking to God. This is our prayers and our understanding of him. So today our Psalm is Psalm 95, verses 1 through 7a, and it says this, O come, let us Sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and the dry land which his hands have formed. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture. Let us make a joy 
faithful noise to the Lord and sing songs of praise. also have a New Testament reading, uh, and this one is from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. It's chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. And again, it is the word of the Lord, so I will pronounce it and say the word of the Lord. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead 
and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things of the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Lord Jesus Christ is placed as a king above all, anything that has a name, which is everything. He has been placed the sovereign over, the king, the Lord over. Imagine going to a king. If you were to knock on the door of a king in the wee hours of the morning, because you wanted or needed something, how would that king react? And even if, what I mean, let's say you needed a need filled, you, you needed water or uh, food or something, or let's just say you needed love. So you go and knock on the door at three in the morning of a king to give you that love. How would they react? Now here's the beauty of it. Jesus has been placed as that king, that authority. But he came to love us. He sought us out as his lost sheep and adopted us into the family of God. The only person that knocks on the door of a king at 3 o'clock in the morning for a drink is their child. The only person that knocks on the door of a king at 3 o'clock in the morning for food to eat is their child. The only person that knocks on the door of a king at 3 o'clock in the morning for no reason other than they need to be loved is that of a child. The Lord has adopted us in his family. He has sought us out. And he is our king, but also our father. We are his children. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our last reading of the day comes from the Gospel of Matthew. And when we read the Gospel, these are the words of Jesus' actual life, his actual words in our lives. So we actually hold it up, and I proclaim it, and I say, this is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. And everyone says, glory be to you, Lord God. It's from chapter 25. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are cursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger. You did not welcome me, naked, and you did not give me clothing, sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly, I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. I have two quick stories, illustrations that came to my mind when I read this. My wife and I have cats. She, she's a cat person. I'm a dog person, so we have cats. Uh, one of the cats is kind of like a dog. He, he's really more like a dog than a cat at times. Uh, and either way, cat person or a dog person, I'm an animal lover, and we love our cats. And, and in a lot of ways, we treat them like our children. And, and we feed them. And from the time we got them when they were just kittens, when they were young, uh, and, and they're, not, they're not from the same litter. One is a very large orange uh, male, and the other one's a kind of dainty uh, all white with blue eyed female and, and they're, they're wonderful and they're great and they're so very different and they complement each other but they've been together since they were kittens so for them they very much are brother and sister they are an adopted family uh, and my wife and I treat them like our kids uh, we love them and and and, and do everything we can and, and they're quite obsessed with us honestly uh, it almost like a child there are times this morning my wife and I were sitting having coffee uh, in our kitchen table and both of the cats were just sitting there five feet away just staring at us and it's not unusual we'll, we'll be watching tv or reading a book or sitting in bed or whatever and we look over and there's a cat just staring at us um, they're, they're really wonderful but since the time they were little we have fed them on the same plate we, we have a, a plate we put on the ground and we put the food in the middle and then we split it on one side of the plate and some on the other side of the plate and one stands here he has his spot and, and the other stands here so, so Toby's eating on one side of the plate Elsie's eating on the other side of the plate uh, and they eat their food now now Elsie like I said a little dainty thing Toby is uh, a, a monster he, he is a pretty large cat and he has a pretty strong appetite 
And when we would first feed them that way, Toby would eat all of his food as fast as he could, and Elsie's just in there nibbling along. And then Toby would, after he was done with his, start nudging his way and start moving Elsie out of the way so he could eat her food. So we very quickly, as, as uh, the adults in the house, as the humans, with better reason, uh, would stop him. Toby, stop eating Elsie's food. Uh, be a good brother. Let your sister eat. And, and he started to recognize that. And at first, it was really a challenge. We had to kind of keep pulling him back uh, and, and moving him, picking him up, and just moving him out of the room altogether so that Elsie could actually eat. And then after a little bit of time, after a few weeks, a few months, uh, we noticed that he would start to kind of nudge his way to, to nudge her out, and we would just have to say his name, Toby. And he would immediately stop and pull back. And then it got to the point where we didn't even have to say his name. We just had to make a noise. We'd have to go, hmm, and he would pull back. And then something cool happened. We always had to be in the room. We had to be in the kitchen when they were eating, because if we weren't there, oh, he's knocking her out of the way. If he doesn't think we're watching him. But then eventually we got to a point where I was able to stand. There's a little window nook uh, to our living room in our kitchen, and I was able to hide there so he couldn't see me. And one day we fed them. And the most amazing thing happened. They were both eating and Toby, you know, gnawing all his food and Elsie, you know, dainty and eating. Toby ate all his food, looked up at Elsie eating. And without me making a noise, without him even knowing I was there, he turned and walked out of the kitchen and let her eat. And this is silly. I know this is silly. But it made me so happy. And my wife so happy to see that he has learned, in a way, whether he knows what he's doing or not, he has learned how to care for Elsie. He has learned how to allow her to get nourishment, food, to eat. And after she's done and she walks away, well, then he'll come back and he'll finish off the plate, of course. But I was so happy. And we refer to him now as uh, a good, I mean, uh, her big brother. And whenever he walks away, it's always, we're, we're so happy and we just can't wait to let him know how excited we are. We see him walk away and, and every single time it's like, oh, Toby, you're such a good big brother. Look at you taking care of your little sister. Um, and I know we're sappy, but it was such a neat thing. And, and thinking about it, it actually reminded me, I, I used to be a teacher. I was a teacher um, at a local Christian school. And, and the school really is an amazing place. Uh, it is a place where God is so very evident, where Christ is so evident. In fact, uh, just a couple days ago, it was my mother-in-law's birthday, and she had been a teacher at that school. And then last year, as she uh, fell ill, she wasn't able to continue teaching. Uh, and, and, and not just luckily, really a miracle of God. And through a lot of prayer and, and devotion and an amazing medical staff, she actually uh, has a fantastic prognosis right now and is doing well. And there was a big chance last year that she believed, and a lot of us thought she might not see this birthday. But she had a birthday, and the most amazing thing happened. Uh, the school that she used to teach at, they organized to have a sign put in her front yard that morning. So she woke up that morning, and she walked out, and in her front yard was a huge sign saying, Happy Birthday. Uh, and then she thought that was it, and wonderful. And that, if that wasn't enough, later on that afternoon, at 4.30 in the afternoon, they all met up. Uh, near her house and they actually put together a parade where all the students that she's had over the years uh, drove in their cars by her house and waved and honked horns and gave her cards and were able to celebrate her birthday with her. And the cool thing for me is I got to lead them. I got to meet them at the meeting place and lead them down the road. And I got to tell you, I was worried at first because there was like one car there when I got there and after five minutes, a second car. And I was thinking, well, at least there's three of us. But 10 minutes later, an entire row of the parking lot was full where we were meeting. And as I started to lead the parade, I, I looked behind me and I saw 30 cars lined up behind me. And it was the most amazing thing. And as I pulled down her street first and out the front yard, my, my wife was there getting her outside. It was all a surprise. She had no idea what was going on. Immediately the tears and the joy and the excitement of knowing that she is loved and a part of a family. That's the type of school that we're talking about. It is a place that truly Christian is in the name and they mean it because they treat and love each other like family. And they are there visiting those who are sick. And they are there giving gifts and giving to those who are in need. It's been so wonderful. But that's not what I thought of. What I thought of was actually this. A few years ago, Miss Smith, she is a, a kindergarten teacher. That's, that's my mother-in-law. And she had a girl in her class 
uh, who is actually the daughter of, of a friend of mine, and, and he is an amazing dad. He, he loves his daughter so very much, and he wants everything to be the best for her. Uh, and, and he absolutely has done everything he can to be the best father possible to her. It's one of his most important goals in life is to be a good father and a good husband. And he's really quite brilliant. And here's the thing. He, he's a cool guy, but he's entirely a softie and in the best ways. He, he is such a, a lover of people and of things and of his daughter. And, and it's such an amazing thing. But this cool thing happened. Miss Smith had his daughter in her class in kindergarten, and she had another student in her class who came in, and, and the student had Down syndrome. And it was the first time Miss Smith had a kid in her class with Down syndrome, um, and it was, it was perfectly okay. It was just a bit challenging. And if any of you have friends or family with Down syndrome, you can understand the love and the heart and the amazing people that they are, but you also know the struggle uh, of that. So Miss Smith was a little bit concerned, just thinking, I've already got this many kindergartners in the class together. That's a pretty big load to handle. Um, and now a, a child with special needs. Um, and just and she, she's just concerned, thinking, okay, I've got to do what I can to love her as best I can. Uh, it's just going to be a little challenging. And it, it is. But the most amazing thing happened. My friend, whose daughter was in the class, took a, 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 a time to sit next to the girl with Down syndrome. And throughout the day, helped her with everything. Without the day, took her under her wing and showed her everything that they were doing and gave her comfort and help and gave her a friend and someone to lean on and someone to talk to and guidance. The little girl was so amazing. They were so amazing together and kind of developed this wonderful friendship. But that's not the, I mean, that okay, that might be the best part, but that's, there's another part that's cool too. And the other part that's cool too is this. When my friend came that afternoon to pick up his daughter from the class, Mrs. Smith took him aside and told him and said to him, your daughter has been amazing today. Your daughter has taken this little girl with these needs under her wing and has cared for her needs and has done everything she can to be supportive and to be there and to put the needs of this girl before those of her own. And as Miss, Miss Smith shared this with my, uh, the father, he started to tear up. He was so excited to know that his daughter has that type of heart for people, for those in need. And he just reached down and picked her up and just hugged her and loved her. And was so thrilled to see that. We are adopted members of the family of God. And he seeks us out. He wants us. He wants us in his life like any good father. And he wants us to have a relationship with him like any good father. But when we do what he asks, even when he, we don't, he, it's not so much if he's watching. We don't have to be like Toby and only behave when he's watching. Him watching helps. It helps if we know he's watching because that does make us kind of go, well, we got to behave. We're being watched. But even when we're not watching, when we're not even in the room, to see that we are caring for his creation, for his people, that we are loving everyone the way that he loves us. The joy that that must bring to him. I think of my, of my friend as he came to pick up his daughter and he got that good news about how she was caring for the other girl. And it's not like he didn't love his daughter already. He already loved her as much as any father can love his daughter. But he was so proud of her. And so excited to see who she is and who she's becoming. Our Father in Heaven loves us. And it's not like he can love us more or less, depending upon what we do. He already loves us as much as any father can, if not more than any father can. But imagine the joy it brings to him when we actually do what he asks. When we actually show love to those around us. When we actually work as his body, as the church. The church isn't just tradition, and the church isn't just an organization or a social club or a country club or any of those. The church is the body of Christ. It is us being his physical body on this earth to do his work on this earth. And when he sees us do that, I can't even imagine the joy he must feel. I was so excited. Uh, the joy I felt seeing my cat let my other cat eat was nothing compared to the joy of my friend seeing his daughter loving someone like she did. 
And that is nothing in comparison to the joy that our Father in Heaven feels when we love each other. He is our King. He is our Father. We celebrate Him this day through our readings, through our music, through our prayers. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I'm switching books. I've now brought out my Book of Common Prayer, my prayer book, and we're going to do something we haven't done on the online version for a while or service for a while, which is we're actually going to read through the prayers of the people. Every Sunday, we have a part of our service called the Prayers of the People, and it, it honestly, it can seem a little bit rote. It can seem a little familiar because we do them week after week, and even though there are some different versions, they're pretty similar, and we kind of read through them, and people respond, Lord, hear our prayer. Um, and here's the deal, even if it seems rote, even if it seems uh, redundant, uh, the power of prayer, we have the ability to pray, but the power of prayer lies in God. So whether it's redundant or not, the fact that we are saying these prayers, God is hearing them. And there are times where it hits you in your heart and soul. And by saying these prayers, we're really reaching to God. So what we're going to do this morning is I'm actually going to read through the prayers of the people. Uh, in one of the forms, this one is actually four and four, and uh, you'll notice it, it covers a gamut of, uh, it covers all the things that we really need to pray for every single day of our lives. So I'm going to say, let us pray for the church and the world. Please join me as we pray. Grant Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Praise God. this morning. I hope you found it uplifting, enriching, and enlightening. I hope the joy of the Lord will for always, for always, <laughs> for always be your strength. He is our King. He is our Father. And He loves us as such, as a good Father. Let us go into the world in peace, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit to love God and to love our neighbors all of them. I hope you have a blessed week. This week is Thanksgiving, so please stay tuned. We'll, we'll have a special Thanksgiving uh, something coming to you this week. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.